We've covered just about every inch of the climate debate thus far. We've seen the history. And before watching this video, it is imperative that you watch the previous episodes in this series. The link to all of them is in the About tab below the video and in the top comment on the page. Here's the cliff notes. Climate change is real. But every attempt we have ever made to model climate change has been woefully inaccurate. The right is attacking, using the failures to argue for deregulating poisonous pollution. The left is in denial about their own shortcomings and inability to get the right answers. When scientists went looking for why we had failed, they were met with cuts, jabs, threats. And yet, every day more people lose their fear professors, professionals, IPCC reviewers, and people like Weather Channel founder John Coleman are jumping the global warming ship. As June ends, with both sides of the climate swings presenting relevant meteorological events across the planet, we're poised to add to the dozens of studies showing how our planet is not subject to the whim of human stupidity. Here is what we have to add to the volume of information already presented the latest evidence. We'll start with the oceans. In late June, the world learned of a previously unseen oceanic forcing on the climate, one that has gone on for millennia and has nothing to do with humans. We also recently learned that one of the few updates the left was willing to make to the dismal climate models is now revealing a stronger summer storm forcing on Arctic ice melts. The stronger storms are an essential element of the extreme climate swings separate from general warming, and this is causing part of the increased melting in the north. And while we discuss the ice, here's another name jumping the global warming ship, joining the list of distinguished scientists seeking to now promote the truth rather than propaganda. One of the most damning points of the global warming deception is that the Antarctic ice is growing faster than the ice is melting up north, especially the part exposed to the atmosphere, where we pollute. Most people were too smart to buy the explanation that the bit of underside melting in the western sheet was our fault. But now we don't need to wonder. Some of those underwater volcanoes that are missing from the failing models can be found right underneath that western sheet and are almost certainly causing the melting. Furthermore, up north, while the long-term trend continues the decline of Arctic ice, the experts found that June showed higher ice than previous years, although the temperatures indeed began to swing upwards towards the end of the month. In previous episodes of this series, we have shown a few dozen papers on just how much we underestimated solar forcing, especially in how we expected the nice little 11 year cycle to be absolutely active as opposed to looking at longer time scales. Some processes are instant, others take decades but our understanding of how the sun can affect us all the way through the atmosphere is growing faster than any other sector of understanding in climate science. A good place to start. Geomagnetic indices must be at least as active on forcing as CO2, and we're just getting started on quantifying these processes. I'll end with a terrific article on just how screwed up our educational system is. A word to students. Do what your teachers and professors say. You can ask questions, but don't push it. You gotta play this game. They are taking jobs from those who show an ability to think for themselves. They are threatening the families of those with the tools to prove how much of a lie has hung over our heads. They invented a 97% consensus out of censorship and cherry picking. The world will still be waiting for you when you get there. Until then, just try to survive the fantasy you are forced to endure.